I'm John Foster. Join me for a behind the scenes look at Ventura County Archaeology. The clock was running and time was running out. In the process of moving thousands of bottles of beer that were not on the wall, see part one, it gradually became obvious that part of an undiscovered gem of the Ventura Mission lay before me. The gem was in the empty crawl space under the rear of Barano's grocery store. In a few hours' time, a trench was going to be dug through this archaeological feature, and the client was waiting for me to provide options and recommendations. This feature was an amazing piece of mission period history, and until a few hours ago thought lost forever, and now its rebirth was an immediate jeopardy. Join me as I discuss exactly what we had discovered, the finds we made, and more importantly, what we didn't find and why that is important today. What had initially appeared to be a concrete lime trough beneath the building's crawl space had been thoroughly brushed and cleaned by the crew. We could now see that it featured sloping walls with mortared cobbles and ladrillos, covered with a lime mortar plaster. It was apparent from the methods and materials of construction that our discovery was likely to be the Mission La Bateria. The Chumash women and other natives who lived at the mission brought the dirty clothes to the La Bateria and soaked them in the central tank, spread the wet clothes out on the sloped cobble sides, rub soap on them, and then beat them with wooden paddles. After a rinse, the clothes were spread out on simple racks made of wood branches to dry. I was quite excited to think that we had just found the lavanderia for Mission San Buenaventura. The fine would be a first for Ventura County and estimated to be one of only a few mission laundries known in the state of California. Historical sketches indicated that the native laundry and accompanying fountain were in front of the mission but years of construction had obscured their location, and they were considered lost and destroyed. In fact, when Piranha's grocery store was built in 1877, the workers needed to demolish the upper part of the laundry in order to be able to construct their floor. This had to be a massive undertaking, as the lavanderia was quite substantial. One could only imagine the workers groaning at the demolition work they had to perform, chipping away at the old structure bit by bit. Thus, the first commercial brick building in Ventura came to be built. We don't know exactly how much of the lavandry is missing, but it appears to be at least a section. As we cleaned up around the buttresses, we were surprised to find five different aqueducts, either going in or out of the lavandria, and not knowing where they were going made me feel like I was on an LA freeway. Based on the position and nature of the aqueducts, it is probable that the exterior aqueducts, A, C, and E, were overflow conduits from the fountain and bypassed the lavanderia, which presumably couldn't handle the amount of flow coming out of the fountain. So how does the Ventura lavanderia compare with others? The one most similar is at Santa Barbara Mission, and its location in relation to the mission buildings in the adjacent fountain all match the one in Ventura. It is very possible that the same person built or organized the construction of both of these uh, laundries, since they share many of the same features and characteristics. The realization that the two laundries were so similar evoked a personal and professional sense of loss when I realized, like Santa Barbara, the Ventura laundry most probably had two stone sculptures, both of which would have been presumed to have been lost or destroyed. The use of sculptures at the Ventura Mission is well represented by the one called El Caballo, a horse head at the filtration tank on the hill behind Albinger Museum, which has some pieces of the sculpture. So did time run out? Did modern day progress encroach further on this hidden gem of Ventura's past? The answer is thankfully no. Though we didn't get the opportunity to further explore and learn from the Lavanderia, the city of Ventura, the contractor and myself all came together to reach a solution in that the city did not scar or demolish the site with the trenches that it had desired to do. Instead, it was buried with sterile sand and the original crawl space flooring was replaced on top of it, thus preserving this amazing feature. The concern today is that the other buried remnants somewhere along East Main Street will need to be protected, even if their exact location is unknown. Ministerial permits must be carefully reviewed since utility, replacement, or structural upgrades could destroy or significantly damage part of this valuable National Register site. 
I always will be thankful and grateful for the experience of investigating San Buenaventura's missions La Bonderia. And I hope as you walk along the streets of downtown, perhaps you'll take a moment to imagine the sounds of splashing water from a long ago fountain as the native women collected their clothing under this warm setting sun of Ventura. Thank you for watching.